GCSE economics video with me, Mr. Goff, at mrgoff.com. Today's video will be about evaluating the costs and benefits of economic choices, particularly in terms of their sustainability. The sustainability of an economic decision can be looked at in three distinct different ways. The first is economic sustainability, then social sustainability, and finally, environmental sustainability. Economic sustainability might be looked at at a firm, region, or even country level. All of them will want to know the same thing. Is it the best use of scarce resources to allow them to grow over time? In addition, you need to consider both the associated costs now and ones that might come up in the future as a result of the economic choice being made, as well as any benefits such as new job growth or employment in areas where there are many jobs at the moment. Let's consider the economic sustainability of the recently completed Elizabeth Line. The line came with quite a cost, coming in eventually at over 19 billion pounds. For some firms near the construction, they may have been hampered with worse traffic or problems getting people to come into their business while the area was in such a state. There's always an opportunity cost when the government spends a lot of money. And no doubt with this only affecting Londoners, people in the rest of the country may raise an eyebrow or two at the massive cost involved. The economic positives of building the Elizabeth Line include increased labour mobility for people that live along the corridor where the line was built, as well as the great number of jobs that were created. This reduces unemployment and increases income tax revenue. Businesses like cafes along the route may also have benefited from extra custom from the workers that were building the line. Social sustainability is about how an economic decision will affect a community's quality of life. It's also about whether the decision will be fair for everyone. Returning to our example of the Elizabeth line, in terms of social sustainability, it does make it much easier for people along the route of the new line to commute by train. This will reduce congestion and pollution along the route. On the negative side, during its construction, those that live in the area, particularly where the work was above ground or where there were new stations put in were inconvenienced. But probably the most significant social consideration is that its effects are really only felt in London, but it's paid for out of national taxes. So the question is, is that really fair? Environmental sustainability, as the name implies, is about the impact of an economic decision on the environment. We need to consider whether renewable resources are being used at a rate that allows them to be effectively renewed, and whether non-renewable resources are being put to the best and most efficient use. Increasingly, firms have to consider pollution and the effects that they might have on both the levels of carbon in the atmosphere and other areas of pollution that might affect the community. Returning to our example of the Elizabeth line, in terms of environmental sustainability, it may reduce the traffic on the roads and with that congestion and pollution in the area where the line has been built. It's underground for the most part, so there's no real noise pollution created by it in most areas. In its construction, tunnelling itself is an extremely energy intensive activity, so it will take time before the benefits will be seen. There is no actual guarantee that it will reduce traffic in the area. Perhaps more people will travel. Well, that brings us to the end of our video, evaluating the costs and benefits of economic choices on sustainability. If you want to try and apply this further, you could consider applying it to the HS2 argument or to the third runway at Heathrow debate. Both of these would make good scenarios to investigate. That's all for today, and I hope to see you again at mrgoff.com for another GCSE economics video in the future.